if you need to merge two or more data sets in SQL, you can use joins. A join is SQL instruction that you put in the from clause of your query. It is used to identify the tables you're querying and how they should be combined. There are multiple ways you can combine data sets, so therefore there are multiple SQL joins you need to learn. Optionally, if you want to practice, I'll explain how you can pull my public Postgres Docker image, which already has all the tables and data that we'll use in this tutorial. But first, let's quickly refresh what primary and foreign keys are. Typically, in relational database, data is organized into different tables made of attributes, columns, and records, rows. Now, the primary key in SQL is a single column or sometimes multiple columns that can uniquely identify a row in a table. This is usually the ID column, which is short for identifier. Now, another column in a table that establishes relationship with another table's primary key via shared value is called a foreign key. Foreign keys are also typically titled IDs, but prepended with the name of the reference table. Now, let's go over a real-world example. Let's say you have a customer table. It could contain data from CRM tool like Salesforce, which includes users who are paid customers. And you may have another even table with data from analytics tool like Mixpanel that tracks all the user's actions. Notice that there is a common column customer ID between the two tables. In the customer table, the customer ID column is the primary key. Now, in the event table, the customer ID column is the foreign key, since that column refers to the customer ID column in the customer table. We can use this relationship to join the two tables together to get the customer and events data in one table. Now, for a join operation, technically, you only need two columns of the same type, one from each table. It does not matter if they are primary or foreign keys. For instance, you can join tables using age column from both the teacher and student tables. However, you need to be very careful when joining tables without foreign keys. For example, you could technically join a car table using the model column and the item table using the color column. They have the same type, so it's possible, but in reality, it wouldn't make any sense. All right, let's go back to the customer and event tables. Each type of a joint is used to answer a specific business question. For example, what if you want to get only active users? In other words, we want to get only users that have performed an action. You would use inner joint to join the tables together. An inner joint combines the columns on a common dimension when possible and only includes data for the columns that share the same values in the common column. In the example, the customer ID would be the common dimension used for the inner join. This is default type of join in SQL. In fact, you don't even need to specify inner join when writing a query. Only writing join is the inner join. SQL first creates a new table with the columns from both tables you're trying to combine. This mainly happens because we used asterisk to select all columns. However, you can also select only specific columns for the join. It then tries to find values that match between the columns you specify in the own statement. Putting the table name with a period before the column name makes it clear which two columns of the tables SQL will be looking for matches between. SQL then starts with the first value of the specified column in the first table customer, customer ID, and then looks through every value in the specified column of the second table, event customer ID, for a match. If there is a match, it copies the data from both the row of the first table and the row of the second table and puts it in the newly created table. SQL will not add any rows that did not have a match. Be sure to know what data you want in the final table so that the data left out does not affect your analysis. Another thing to consider is that SQL will join the rows every time there is a match. So if your data in the columns you're joining on are not unique, 
you will get duplicate data in the final table. You can use my docker image and run the same join. You'll get the same result. Now, what if you want to get all users from the customer table? and only the actions that these users have done. This is the second most common type of join in SQL, where left refers to the first table. Initially, SQL will attempt to match all the users from the left table with actions in the right table. This is again a conceptual model. In practice, the database performs a more optimized comparison that is not visible to the end user. However, there is a significant difference in how SQL treats the left table. For any rows in the first table that do not have a match, SQL will still add these rows to the new table, placing nulls as the values. Before moving to the next joint, let's slightly modify the source tables. We'll still use the same customer table, but now we'll create a couple more. First of all, we'll dedicate a table to define action types. In the future, you can expand this table to create more actions. The new event v2 table will contain the same information about customer activity, but now we'll use customer ID and action ID foreign keys to establish relationship with other two tables. It's a common practice in SQL to spread data across multiple tables. In this case, we'll use right joint to combine the tables. Right in this context refers to the right action table. So we aim to get all the action types and only associated events. Like a regular joint, SQL will first try to find all events and match them with the action ID from the right table. Then, since it's a right joint, SQL will copy the remaining action types from the right table and use no values for the events. This is one of the rarest types of joint in the SQL. The reason for this is that any right joint can be rewritten as a left joint, which is a more conventional. Now, for the following example, let's use two additional source tables. One table is for the teachers and another one for students. As you can see, we don't have any foreign keys, but since the age column in both tables is of the integer type, we can use it to join the tables. Let's say you want to have a table that combines data from both the teacher and student tables. You would use outer joint to merge the table together. Sometimes it's also referred to as a full join. An outer joint combines the columns from all tables based on one or more common dimensions when possible. In this case, that's the age column. It includes all data from all tables. This is the third most common type of join in SQL. This query finds matches and adds them to a newly created table, much like a left joint. However, after completing the left joint of the data, a right joint is essentially performed. The following examples will use the same teacher and student tables. The first one is a union. It is the fourth most common type of join in SQL. A union does not attach the data from two tables to a single row. Instead, union stacks two datasets on top of each other into a single table. The data types of columns must be the same as well. Here we'll select a specific age column. When you perform the union operation, SQL will take all possible values and deduplicate them. On the other hand, the union all operator selects fields from two or more tables similar to union. However, unlike union, union all doesn't ignore duplicate fields. So you'll get 28 twice in this example. And finally, the fifth most common type of join in SQL is a cross join. A cross join does not look for matches between any values in two datasets. Instead, for each row in the first table, every row of the second table will be attached to it and added to the final table one by one. In the previous video, we discussed how database sharding is performed, so you may find it interesting as well. Also, if you want to learn more about Kubernetes, such as differences between Noteboard, Load Balancer and Ingress, you can watch this video. Or maybe you want to learn more about differences between Deployment, Stateful Set and Daemon Set. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.